I have been fascinated by beluga whales for a long time and thoroughly enjoyed following the journey of little white and little grey as they move from captivity in an ocean park in Shanghai to the relative freedom of their sanctuary in Greenland. They have such expressive faces and seemingly gentle natures, what isn't to like? The ability to make different facial expressions is as a consequence of their bulbous forehead called a melon, which is flexible and capable of changing shape. As well as this, they have a movable neck, which allows them to move their heads up and down and from side to side. They are known as the canaries of the sea due to the array of noises they make to communicate, such as chirps, clicks, whistles and squeals. More recently, they have been deemed the social butterflies of the cetaceans, as they like to hang out with their friends in the same way as you or I do. More on this later. Let us first look at where beluga whales live. They are found in the Arctic and subarctic waters, and five distinct populations have been identified. These are the Beaufort Sea population, Bristol Bay, Chuck Inlet, Eastern Bering Sea, and the Eastern Chukchi Sea population. Each population is unique and is isolated either genetically, physically, or both by migration routes and their preferred habitats. As sea ice accumulates in the autumn, some populations undergo seasonal migrations, travelling up to 6,000 kilometres, leaving the more northern waters as sea ice builds up in the winter to spend their time in the open sea alongside the pack ice. They will venture into the ice using polynias, which are areas of open water within the sea ice, to surface and breathe. They have no dorsal fin, making it easier for them to swim beneath the ice. In the spring, as the ice melts, they return to coastal areas and are sometimes seen swimming hundreds of miles up coastal rivers, where the water is warmer, fresher and shallower. This is most probably to go through their annual molt of their skin. In these shallow waters, the whales find their favourite spots to rub themselves against coarse sand and rocks. Other populations, such as the Cook Inlet population, don't migrate and stay in their local area. Belugas mate in late winter and early spring and give birth to a single calf 14 months later, which will stay with their mother for two years. They eat a variety of fish and invertebrates and they themselves are preyed upon by killer whales and polar bears. Belugas can swim far into ice-covered waters to avoid orcas, but here they are at greater risk of being hunted by polar bears. So why are belugas said to be social butterflies? Well, in a study published in June 2020, scientists revealed some very interesting facts about the social structure of beluga whales. It had been thought that, like orcas, their social structure centred around females with calves of different ages, but they found something quite different. They studied belugas from 10 different locations, from small resident groups to larger migratory populations. Small social groups were observed, consisting of 2 to 10 individuals and large herds of 2,000 or more. Five types of social groups were identified. Those with only one adult and calf, the adult being the mother. Groups consisting of only adults with calves. Groups of just juveniles. Groups of adults only and mixed age groups. The two types of herd identified were adult only herds and mixed age herds. Within the mixed age herd, other two groups were identified, which were daily aggregations and multi-day aggregations. The adult only herds and groups almost always consisted of males only. The study revealed that almost all whale groups contained individuals which were closely related to one or two other individuals, from both maternal and paternal lineages. However, close relatives did not always associate in a group, but were observed to be in another group close by. Individuals were seen moving between groups over a few days, and in some cases over a few hours. The groups also consisted of individuals which were distantly related or unrelated, with large herds in particular being dominated by distantly or unrelated individuals. These unrelated whales spent long periods of time travelling together, sometimes splitting up only to come back together later. Basically, just like us, belugas like to hang out with their friends. Even in human cultures that have multi-generational households, 
We don't spend all of our time with our families. We like to spend time enjoying social contact with our friends. So beluga whale social structure is different to other whales, such as orca and pilot whales, where there are matriarchs, which lead the family group. When these matriarchs die, it can lead to social and cultural disruption. In beluga whale societies, it would seem that both male and females are important sources of ecological and social knowledge, and so the death of an older male could also lead to social and cultural disruption. The other interesting thing is that in these communities, social learning may also occur among non-king, as well as kin. So what does the future hold for these endearing creatures? While many of the populations have thousands of whales, the Beaufort Sea population has around 19,629 whales, the Eastern Bering Sea has 6,994, and the Eastern Chukchi Sea population has 20,752. Whether these populations are rising or declining is unknown. The Bristol Bay population has around 1,926 individuals and numbers are rising, whereas the Cook Inlet population was estimated at only 327 individuals and is declining. The Cook Inlet population, which is a non-migratory population, are considered endangered. The reasons for this decline warrants a video of its own, so I won't go into details here. So in general, numbers are looking good for beluga whales, but that may be about to change. The main threat to beluga whales is climate change and the impact this has on the amount of sea ice. It is a well-established fact that Arctic sea ice is on the decline and of main concern is how humans will change their behaviour due to the reduction in this sea ice. It will allow humans to navigate between northern land masses more readily and consequently give easier access to areas where belugas live. The number of ships sailing through the Arctic for gas and oil exploration and extraction, commercial shipping for both transportation and tourism, and fishing has already increased and is likely to continue increasing. More ships mean more ship strikes with the whales and the noise disrupts their communication and behaviour. The Arctic is becoming more urbanised and industries are expanding, producing more pollution which accumulates in the whale's blubber. Due to less sea ice and warming of the Arctic Ocean, the distribution, composition and productivity of their prey may change. It is also feared that with changing weather patterns, the belugas may face more ice entrapments than they do at present, as their ice refuges become unreliable. With Arctic waters becoming warmer and changes in circulation patterns occurring, species that live further south will be able to move into these waters. If species such as humpback whales and minke move into these waters, they will compete with belugas for food. If species such as orcas are able to move north, unhindered by sea ice, they will have more opportunity to prey upon the belugas. Another consequence of the reduction in sea ice is the timing of their annual migrations. Belugas migrate from their summer residences when sea ice starts to form. In recent years, this has occurred later in the year. In response to this, the population in Chukchi Sea have delayed their autumn migration by about 33 days. However, the Beaufort Sea population started their migration at the same time. For the Chukchi Sea population, this delay in migration could mean that they are able to take advantage of good foraging for longer. However, tagged belugas have been observed to be diving deeper and for longer, possibly because they have found new prey or their usual prey have moved into deeper depths. What scientists are yet to discover is that whether the extra energy their whales need for deeper and longer dives are ultimately harmful to their health. I sincerely hope that these adorable whales can be protected from the harm that us humans can inflict upon them, so ensuring that their numbers remain high and they are able to roam the waters of the Arctic in peace, chatting and socialising with one another, even if there is little sea ice left.